Support for Seattle Now comes from the Pacific Northwest Waterways Association with the Columbia Snake River System, providing clean energy and sustainable commerce as Washington aims for carbon neutrality by 2030. Learn more at pnwa.net slash rivervalues. Hey, it's Patricia Murphy. It's Wednesday, and this is Seattle Now. You've seen the numbers and heard the call to stay home this Thanksgiving. We are deep in the third surge of COVID. And yesterday, another record for cases, the fourth in a week. 14,000 people have been diagnosed in just the last week, enough people to fill the old key arena. While we're busy staying away from each other, healthcare workers are getting a close up view of this pandemic. In a minute, we'll talk with advanced nurse practitioner Heather Stevens-Selby about the challenges of testing and caring for patients during the surge. But first, let's get you caught up. The governor has appointed Dr. Umer Shaw as the new Secretary of Health for Washington. Shaw will take over for Dr. John Wiesman, who had plans to step down prior to the pandemic. Shaw is currently the executive director for Harris County Public Health in Texas. A wedding near Ritzville, Washington, earlier this month has led to nearly 40 coronavirus cases. The Grant County Health Department is urging everyone who attended the event to get tested and quarantine until November 21st. Governor Inslee's new restrictions on weddings include no more than 30 people at ceremonies and indoor receptions are not permitted. And the 737 MAX could be cleared to fly again. King 5 reports that the Federal Aviation Administration is set to lift the 20-month grounding following two crashes that killed 346 people. If the plane is cleared, American Airlines says it's set to resume flights by the end of the year. As COVID cases grow, so does the strain on the medical system. We are eight months into this pandemic, and healthcare workers are battered. Heather Stevens Selby is an advanced nurse practitioner and the director of clinical support for Health Point Community Health Centers. She spoke to us from a COVID test site in Renton, where she works. It's a drive through test site, and we plan for 500 people a day, and we are well over 1,000 a day now. Oh, my gosh. Yep. So you're seeing this at work right now? Right now. Right now. Yeah. And you've all been working nonstop for months. The, the weight of this disease is huge, and it's so kinetic right now. Things are moving so, so quickly. Burnout was an issue in the medical field even before the pandemic. How is this landing for you and, and the people you work with? Well, we certainly are fatigued. People aren't taking their, their holidays. They're not getting time off. Um, people are tired. And it's hard to keep up um, with all the changes are you seeing people leave the profession right now because they need to do that for their for their health at this point? Yes, I think there's a couple things. One, yes, health is part of it. Two, uh, many of our staff, for example, um, might be single parents. Um, and so we're seeing a pretty significant um, loss of some of our staff, some of our nurses and our medical assistants and dental assistants. Um, and the reason for that most often is um, child care as well. And, and quite frankly, again, the pace and, and it's fatiguing and it can't keep up. Yeah. Yeah. Heather, back in the spring, there was a big concern about personal protective equipment, PPE. Is that still a concern for you? Uh, yeah, we're going back to the same problem. So the biggest issue right now remains those N95s. They're used um, extensively in the ICUs and EDs. So um, we're having significant problems with that. Another big one that's coming up right now is gloves. Um, we only have one manufacturer in the U.S. that actually makes gloves. That is a problem. We moved a lot of our manufacturing for uh, personal protective equipment overseas and we're not the only country needing PPE, as you point out. Um, it's a global issue yet again. Uh, same with the gowns. And so we actually uh, got creative and are using um, washable gowns that are fluid resistant. We are re-wearing PPE. So like masks. Yep. The masks are oh, reworn. Boy. And it can be anywhere from three to ten times on an N95. A mask like I'm wearing right now, which is a surgical mask, I will wear it all day. Um, then I'll toss. 
So it's a it's a severe problem, and and we are not alone. We actually have our own little trading program offline to say, well, do you have this one? I have that one. I'll give you five for your four. You know that kind of thing. So, um, you know, Washington State has done a, an amazing job, but we're not the only state suffering this um, fate. It must be incredibly unnerving to work this way, and I wonder if you're worried about getting sick. I think it's, it weighs on all of us to a point. Um, you know, all of us go into healthcare knowing there's a risk. Um, for example, when I'm in the test site, I go home, my robe is in the garage, I strip there. I immediately um, put it in the wash, turn it on hot with soap and water, and I sneak up the back stairs and, and go shower. And then, you know, join my family, but I keep a social distance, no hugging, no, no anything. Um, And I really haven't hugged my family since the beginning. My family knows how to wear a mask real well at this point. And they know that's my new look. So they're used to it. (laughs) When I think about all the things that you're doing to protect yourself and to protect your family, I want to ask you what you think when you see people out and about not wearing masks, doing things that are dangerous. You know, it, it really breaks my heart because the, the biggest challenge for them to think about is that uh, you're affecting someone else when you're not putting your mask on. So you may feel okay about yourself, but it's that young mother, um, you know, with her baby in the stroller going through the grocery store, you're putting it at risk. Who knows if the baby has, you know, um, health issues or the mother. Uh, I mean, I just cringe. Uh, I'll give you an example. So there's some coaches in American football who who love to wear the mask around their chin. It's called a chin mask and their nose is hanging out. It drives me bananas because it's like, yeah. that's not going to help you. Or, you know, you've got the ones that wear it like an earring thinking, oh, I don't really need it because I'm in a big stadium. Sorry, you really need to wear it all the time. You know, obviously, uh, the work I do, you know, I will say something to someone very politely. Canadians are very polite, and I'm Canadian, so that's how we can pull it off. Um, but I do try to <laughs> say to someone, oh, look, you're, it's falling down. If you pull it up a little higher, or I'll even say, oh, that looks a little small. I'm a nurse. Here's, here's a website you can go to to get the right size. You know, I, I try to help people not be aggressive. But there are people who just absolutely refuse um, to wear it. And they're not thinking about the greater good of their communities. This is definitely the time where we have to think about other people besides ourselves. And moving into this holiday season, we're going to be making a lot of difficult decisions about what we should be doing versus what we want to do. Heather, any messages for people before Thanksgiving? I would say um, really listen to our health experts here in Washington State and our governor. Stay home. Just have your Thanksgiving with your immediate family. Don't invite friends over. Send over goodies to the next door neighbor that's elderly. Leave it in a bag. Knock on the door. Keep your mask on. Walk away, but know that they'll appreciate that that uh, pumpkin pie you left at their doorstep. I have a, a daughter uh, who just started college. She's in Bellingham. First time in my life, she won't be home for Thanksgiving. We mm. made it really clear. You need to stay where you're safe and where you've got, you know, that the familiarity of your roommates. That's a tough call for any anybody, but I implore people, just follow the governor's direction and the, and the health experts' guidance. It will pay off tenfold if we can just halt this and start to um, retract um, the positive cases. Stay safe by not gathering so we can gather next year, I think yes. was the message from the governor. Yes. Heather Stephen Selby, a nurse and director of clinical support for Health Point Community Health Centers. Great to talk to you. Thank you so much for your work, for your dedication during this time, and for your interview right now. Oh, you're welcome. And, and I want to just say thank you to all those healthcare workers out there, no matter what kind of healthcare worker you are. You're doing amazing work. You make a difference. And thank you to the community that's really trying hard to stop this disease. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. The show is produced by Claire McGrain, Sophie Reed, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Patricia Murphy. See you tomorrow.
Hey there, it's Dyer Oxley. I'm a web producer here at KUOW, here to tell you about our new daily newsletter today, so far. You see, every morning, we're going to break down the most important local news stories of the day, so far, and deliver it straight into your inbox. Today, so far, will be KUOW's insight on the fast-moving news of the day. Be sure to get it in your inbox by subscribing for free at KUOW.org newsletter.